It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and the flowers were in bloom. Miffy thought, this is going to be a nice day. Mother, said Miffy, it's such a lovely day. May I visit Poppy Pig? Yes, Miffy, but it's a long way and your scooter is broken. You'll have to walk. It was a long walk and Miffy was happy when she reached Poppy's house at last. She knew that Poppy always had some nice biscuits to eat. When she knocked on the door, she could almost taste those biscuits. But there was no answer and she looked up and saw a note stuck at the door. Miffy read the note. I'm off to visit my cousin, back next week, it said. Oh well, thought Miffy, what else can I do on this lovely day? She walked all the way back home. I think I'll call Melanie, she said. Miffy went to the telephone and dialed Melanie's number. Melanie's mother answered the phone. Can Melanie come out and play with me? asked Miffy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miffy dear, said Melanie's mother. Melanie is in bed with a cold and cannot go outside to play today. I know, thought Miffy. I'll get my ball and go and play with Snuffy. So Miffy went to her cupboard and took out her big brightly coloured ball. Snuffy loves to chase this ball, said Miffy. She ran as fast as she could to where Snuffy lived. We will have great fun, she thought. But when she got there, Snuffy was lying beside her empty food dish, fast asleep. Miffy could see that Snuffy had just had her dinner. Miffy bounced her ball up and down, up and down. But Snuffy only opened one eye, just a little bit, and then closed it again, and stayed fast asleep. So poor Miffy had to go home again, still with no one to play with on such a beautiful day. I'll just have to play by myself, she thought, but I can still have fun. I'll go and fly my kite. She took out her beautiful kite with the long ribbons. She held onto the string and ran across the meadow. She ran and ran, but the kite just bounced along the ground. There was no wind, no wind at all and the kite could not fly up into the air. Miffy stopped running. This started off as such a nice day, she thought, but everything went wrong. I think I'll just go home. At home, Miffy took one of her favourite books from her shelf. Here is something that never goes wrong, she said, a good book. Miffy smiled as she read the funny story. What fun, she thought. It wasn't such a bad day after all. Every time Miffy passed Poppy Pig's house, she admired the beautiful apple tree in Poppy's front garden. In the autumn, the leaves were golden in colour. In the winter, there were no leaves at all. In the spring, lovely white blossoms covered the entire tree. And in the summer, the tree was full of little green apples. Oh, Poppy, said Miffy one summer day, I would love to taste one of your apples. Not yet, Miffy dear, said Poppy. The apples are still too small, green and hard. 
you must wait a while. The next time Miffy walked by Poppy Pig's house, she saw that the apples were larger and were changing their colour. Half green and half red. Now may I please taste one of your apples, Poppy? asked Miffy. Not yet, Miffy, said Poppy. The apples must be all bright red before they are ready to eat. As Miffy was very excited, it was difficult for her to wait for things. She was so eager to taste one of those apples. Very soon, all the apples were very big and bright red. But birds like red apples too. Poppy thought, it's time to pick those apples before the birds eat them. That very day, Miffy walked home from school very quickly, hoping that at last Poppy's apples would be ready to eat. She was so excited, thinking about how good they would taste and could hardly wait to get to Poppy's house. And there it was. But look! There were no more apples in the tree. All those wonderful apples were gone. Miffy ran to Poppy's door and knocked. But Poppy was not home. Who could have taken Poppy's apples? Miffy wondered. She looked into Poppy's kitchen window. There were no apples on the table. Just then Poppy arrived. Oh, Poppy, shouted Miffy. Someone has taken all the apples from your tree. Now I won't be able to taste even one of them. Poppy said, Oh, I was away buying some fresh milk. Wouldn't you like to come in and have a glass of milk with me? Oh, yes, Poppy, said Miffy. But what about your apples? Well, maybe I will have a surprise for you, Miffy dear. And they went inside Poppy's house. As soon as they entered the door, Miffy smelt something very, very good. Something fresh out of the oven. Wouldn't you like to have a big slice of apple pie to go with your milk? And then Poppy opened her oven and brought out a huge pie full of delicious apples. She put the apple pie on the table. It looked wonderful and it smelt delicious. Miffy was very surprised and very happy. At last she had a taste of those wonderful big red apples. Miffy, Melanie and Grunty were invited by Boris and Barbara Bear to a picnic at their home in the forest. The three friends walked very quickly through the woods to get there. They were all very hungry. Soon they were there and they saw Boris making a circle out of some stones on the ground. Barbara was preparing lunch on the picnic table. Hello Miffy, hello Grunty. Hello, Melanie, she called. I'm putting some of the vegetables from our garden into this pot. We will have a wonderful vegetable soup for our lunch. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Grunty. Hello, Melanie, called out Boris. I'm going to cook the soup for our lunch. And you are going to help me cook it. Melanie, you can look in the woods and find some very small sticks to help start the fire. Grunty, will you please fetch some logs from the pile in the back of the house? They will burn hot enough to do the cooking. Then Barbara said, And Miffy, will you please help me slice the carrots and cabbage for the soup? So everyone had a job to do. It was fun and they all got hungrier and hungrier. 
But when everything was ready, they noticed there was still one very important thing missing. We have forgotten to bring water to boil the vegetables in, said Barbara. So Barbara and Miffy went to get water from the house. Once they had filled the pot, they carried it outside. They placed the big pot full of water and vegetables over the fire. Before long, a delicious smell rose from the cooking pot. And as the soup began to boil, they all noticed an exciting bubbling sound. That bubbling is just like music! shouted Miffy. Yes, said Barbara excited. But it needs some rhythm. And she began to tap the cooking pot with a wooden spoon. It made a ringing bell-like sound. Then Melanie stamped her feet in the same rhythm. And Grunty picked up two sticks and began to click them together. I'll get my banjo said Boris, and he ran to the house. When he came back out, strumming his banjo, Miffy also started to dance. And everyone followed her around the soup. Tapping and clicking and strumming and dancing to the music. It was a real promenade, a real forest orchestra. When they had circled the cooking pot three times, the soup was ready at last. The music and dancing had made them all happy and very hungry. So when Barbara finally passed around their bowls and spoons, they all ate the delicious music soup with extra joy. It never tasted so good. Miffy and Aggie were having great fun in the playground. Look at how they went up and down on the seesaw. They were laughing and going up and down, up and down. Just then, Snuffy came running into the playground as well. She was wagging her tail and barking happily. Look, Miffy, said Aggie. Snuffy would like to have a go on the seesaw too. No, no, said Miffy. Seesaws are not for dogs, Snuffy. You can have fun running around, but you would fall off the seesaw. Miffy and Aggie had finished their game on the seesaw, so they walked over to the merry-go-round. with their feet and the merry-go-round went around and around, faster and faster. Snuffy ran around it, around and around, wagging her tail and barking eagerly. Look, Miffy, said Aggie as they spun around and around. Snuffy wants to be on the merry-go-round too. No, no, said Miffy. The merry-go-round is a lot of fun for us, but you would surely fall off and hurt yourself if you got on it. The merry-go-round is not for dogs, but you can run around it if you like. Soon the merry-go-round slowed down. Miffy and Aggie were a little dizzy. Snuffy still wanted to play, and she was almost able to climb to the top of the slide. But she wasn't able to hold on to the ladder, and she fell on the ground, making a little yelp. Oh dear, said Miffy. Are you hurt, Snuffy? The slide is not really for dogs, you know. You must be more careful in this playground. Let's rest a little, said Aggie. 
So they decided to sit on a bench for a while to eat some of the biscuits that their mothers had packed for them in little paper bags. Here, Snuffy, said Miffy. You can have a biscuit too. Biscuits are good even for little dogs. Miffy and Aggie laughed. They didn't want Snuffy to be sad just because she couldn't join in. So now, please wait quietly, Snuffy dear, while Aggie and I go to play on the slide. Then Miffy climbed up to the top of the slide and slid down, laughing happily. Then Aggie climbed up too and slid down. She also laughed. And while they were laughing, Snuffy ran up and climbed to the top of the slide without falling down. No, no, Snuffy, called out Miffy. You must be careful, Snuffy. Slides are not for dogs. But then Snuffy did an amazing thing. She sat down and slid right down the slide and landed softly on a pile of sand at the bottom. You did it! cried Aggie. You did it! cried Miffy. You are such a smart little dog, Snuffy. There was a clear blue winter sky. Miffy was sleeping in her warm, cosy bed. When at last the sun began to rise, Miffy was awakened by the sound of a chirping bird just outside her window. What a beautiful song that bird has, thought Miffy. She must be very happy. She can see the beautiful snow-covered meadow. I would like to be out there too. So Miffy quickly got dressed in her warm coat and her warm scarf and went outside in the crisp white snow. The bird was still there, right in Miffy's garden. What a happy bird, thought Miffy again, and she went to get her sledge. She gave her sledge a little push and jumped onto it. It was such a nice feeling to be sliding over the smooth white snow. Miffy still heard the bird cheeping, just as loudly as ever, and when she looked back, she saw that the bird was hopping after her. The little bird loves the snow too, thought Miffy. She's hopping along with me. But now Miffy had to turn her sledge around and pull it back to her house. She hadn't had her breakfast yet. And even as she did that, the little bird also turned around and hopped after her. That little bird must really like me, thought Miffy. She wants to follow me and sing for me wherever I go. Then Miffy's mother called out. Quickly, Miffy, you don't have time to play in the snow before school. Come in and eat your breakfast. When Miffy had finished her breakfast, the little bird was still there, sitting on the windowsill. And as Miffy walked to school, the little bird followed her again, all the way to the school. Do you want to go to school, little bird? asked Miffy. You already know how to sing. Miffy thought it was funny that the little bird followed her everywhere, always singing. Even as she sat in her classroom, the little bird sat outside the window. When it was time for break, all of the children went out to play in the snow and they were all delighted to see the little bird hopping all around them. Melanie said, I think that little bird is trying to tell us something, Miffy. Yes, said Miffy. She's been chirping and following me all morning. Maybe she is hungry, Miffy, said Melanie. Oh dear, said Miffy. I didn't think of that. The snow has covered the grass and there is nothing outside for a bird to eat. Miffy felt bad. 
Oh, I am silly, she said. I should have known the bird was hungry. She ran inside and brought out the little paper bag with her lunch in it. She took out a nice piece of brown bread and spread some crumbs on top of the snow. The little bird immediately jumped over to the crumbs and ate every one of them. Then she flapped her wings and flew off. The next morning when Miffy woke up, the little bird was there again. This time, Miffy knew just what to do. Puppy 